Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back to Clumsy Trucking. Friday, finally. Finally. How's everyone doing? Thank you for joining me on this uh, very bumpy Friday. I'm preparing. <laughs> I'm actually not sure if we're going with this uh, setup today. It might not work. But we are back in the Scania 4 series at the very least. And we are exploring in this stream something that's new. So I was uh, sent a note by Arias and he told me that uh, Romania Extended 2.3 is now available. And it's compatible with 1.36. So I was thinking, why not try it out? He warned me though that there are quite a number of off-road... Uh, roads <laughs> very bumpy roads so prepare the truck and so i i went with that something like uh, mud runner hype <laughs> probably not uh, going to work though because the trailers i'm seeing are all uh, normal uh, box trailers so we might have to switch hey drive safely yes thank you really appreciate that thank you for joining guys uh, i saw tom jay and alex i think in the beginning thank you guys for joining and drive safely thanks appreciate that some last minute fixes by ses which uh, made sound fixes crash but now it's been updated by drive safely just in time for the stream appreciate that hey wise man and even how are you guys thanks for joining hump day hump day is wednesday isn't it at least here in our parts, Wednesday is the hump day because it's the middle of the work week. Thursday is, I don't know, throwback Thursday. Is that still a thing? <clears throat> so in 2.3, we have the northeast, the eastern parts and northeastern parts uh, updated. So if you guys remember the last time we were in Roex, we were exploring Chernobyl. We passed by the uh, the nuclear plant, and, and right now we are in. I guess this is it, Kiev. It's a bit of a different spelling, but I guess that's it. But to the east is where all the new stuff are. I think it's this what I'm showing on the map right now: Cherkasy, Kremenchok, Lubni, Poltava, Kharkiv, Belgorod, Sumy, Konotop, Krupets, and uh, Troye Bortnoye. Something along those lines. I guess I butchered all the pronunciation, but you get the picture. So we'll be exploring this today. At least we'll try to because I'm having a hard time finding decent jobs going there. So we'll see. Hey, Fasha. Thanks for joining. City Skylines to load for 75 minutes. <laughs> Good luck. Hopefully you don't run out of RAM in the meantime. Also, there's some, some built-in music here. You'll hear it. But uh, let's cut it because I might get muted for that when it gets to YouTube. So, question to you guys. What kind of trailer fits with this kind of setup? Why would you even have this kind of setup? Because we can try looking, but I don't think I've seen anything that uh, even resembles something matching with that. Cherry Hiv. We should be going east. So this is all Ukraine that was updated. Everything is of course going to the west. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. Nope. Not a single job. We might need to refresh. You think, Jay? <laughs> Even if we get the logger, I don't think it will fit, huh? I don't think the it will be a match for our setup. Job engine strikes again. Ooh, that's a new one. Map in extreme. I don't think I've seen that before. Yeah, all box trailers. I think we'll have to change it. 
That was nice, but yeah, let's go with a more traditional setup. We, we can go with a, a box trailer, but it wouldn't look nice. But in any case, that's going to be the least of our problems. So we are in 1.36, guys. So it's the, we have the SMAA, we have Corsica, we have Detours. So yes, the stability might be a bit shaky or even shakier than usual. All the loads change. It doesn't really work uh, like that. Well, for external contracts, it might. But I don't think you can just leave and enter. You have to reset the job economy. So the, the best we could handle is this guy. Chernihiv. Kiev to Chernihiv. But I don't think that's part of the new stuff. Might not be. Let me double check. Pink ribbon jobs. Ah, yo, yeah, those are external contracts. Those uh, refresh much faster. But if you are in a map mod, external contracts won't really uh, be present because external contracts are only compatible in the default um, default areas, the default map, default cities. Cherkasi is new, but Chernihiv is not. Okay. So we'll have to find something else then. Hmm. Well, we can refresh. Let's see. 103 minutes and 37 seconds. How many mods are those? Okay. Let's try this. Save and load. When you want to do one on C to C, yeah. Yeah, even in pro mode, it's very, it's a very uh, tricky thing. Because pro mode modifies a lot of the areas. And sometimes you take a job all the way to the drop-off point and suddenly it's not there. Or the job won't be accepted because the map looks different from what the contract is expecting. So I just don't use any map mods when I'm doing World of Trucks uh, contracts. For events especially. So let's see. Anything... Ah, that one. No, that, that's not the one. Uh, I'm in the wrong spot. Kiev. Kiev to Kiev. Korosten. Uh, that one can work. 17 tons of onions. Everything is a box trailer though. find anything okay let's start with that let us start with that either post packages or onions let's go for the heavier one I'm getting all these errors as well missing terrain material load not sure if it's map related or SCS related. Because I was reading through the forums, the, the Raw X forums this time. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Let's take a screenshot there. <laughs> Not even started and we have screenshots already. Ooh. Get away from the music. Onions can only be hauled 6,000 kilometers or more. <laughs> That's the prereq. So it's a very simplistic truck, very work, uh, workhorse uh, oriented. But we'll have to change the chassis. Or do you guys want to try this with a box trailer? It will not look nice. Definitely will not look nice. But you guys let me know if you want to try it. We can go for a 6x4 short. Or long one can still work. 6x4 short looks nice. And then a... <clears throat> a very nice spoiler. If we're going to take box trailers anyway. Let's go with that. Yeah. That one should work. 
tires are still intact everything is still good okay and then let's uh, pick a smaller engine 440 should be more than enough with a more or less same transmission 12 speed yeah the update breaks a lot of mods actually it this time it's not that bad also I did re-enable different uh, sound mode this time, not EVR. This might sound a bit familiar. Oh, I can't hear it so much. Let me go outside. GPS voices, even GPS voices are broken. I haven't tried that in a while. Hey, run. Let's go in the... One sec, let me, let me show you where that is. Also, seems like something is wrong with the thing here. Welcome back, run. How have you been? Real automatic, no, it shifter. It shifter with 12 speeds, yeah. Pro Mods Truckers MP, I haven't tried it yet. It's only compatible with 1.35, right? Actually, one sec, huh? I don't think this is the sound engine that I wanted. Hmm. Why hasn't it changed? Maybe a different one. I had the 530 and that one had a different sound. Let's try it again. That's the one. That's the one I was looking for. <laughs> Krish Boom's uh, crackle sounds. It's been a while. I was trying EVR sounds, but they were not apparently compatible with this truck. You can't see them in the engine selection at the very least, so I went ahead and looked back for Crash Boom's sound mods and remembered that one of my favorites before was this crackle. Very unique sounds. So although I'm not, I can't remember if we've been to Kiev before. I remember we were in Chernobyl, but did we make it to Kiev? Kiev. This is the capital, I think. Not so sure, but it does sure look massive. It looks like it contains a lot of custom assets as well. Very nice. Wrong gear. Let's go for that. Still a classic, this 4 series. Very 90s. Kiev is the capital of Ukraine. Thanks, Alex. I'm trying to see if I'm going to lag so much or not. In terms of the utilization, I don't think I'm getting that many... I don't think I'm peaking yet. GPU is at 70% at the moment. Lots of different trucks. Hey Sounder, welcome back. I hope by the time we get there, the trailer is still there. I actually needed to tone down the sounds because it is a bit too loud. 
if I kept it at 2. I'm getting frame drops here. Not really on stream. OBS is fine, but the game itself is lagging for me a bit more than usual. It might be the number of objects, might be my CPU that is the bottleneck. Man, this is beautiful. I hope we pass through here again. Yeah, I don't think I've been here before. Very nicely modeled. I wonder when this was added to Roex. But this is uh, next level mapping. Just shows you the maturity of the Roex team. That's the new coach, I think, that came with 1.36. Hinting at a Euro coach sim. Or at least teasing about a Euro coach sim. Along with the, the bus stop in Corsica. In Bonifacio, I think we found. Oh, that episode hasn't released yet. Spoiler alert. <laughs> that will release later, I think. It's been a while since I've uh, tried any of the Krishbo mods. I know a lot of people are uh, divided on that topic, on the whole Krishbo versus EVR thing. Squeeze in, thank you. Some people like Krishbo's more because he, they say the engines from engine sounds from him sound like really their engines under load like the the truck is pulling something they say EVR sounds uh, are more like um, like it's only on idle I'm not really sure I can't uh, say that I agree with that completely but I'm not an expert so yeah probably maybe I don't have a very very sophisticated ear for that let's put it that way Hey Black Fox! <laughs> Good evening guys. Thanks for joining. Glad to see you here again. How have you guys been? Both B Foxes. Yeah, indeed. Always happy to have you here. Great to hear. So when I was choosing a truck earlier, whoa, yeah, this is, I think, a taste of things to come. This kind of bumpiness. So I'm hoping we chose the right truck. I basically looked at my Steam Workshop and looked at the most recent updated truck to see what is compatible with 1.36. And I think so far, only RJL has modified his manifest files at least. <laughs> but it's not even officially supported yet. He said, uh, try it at your own risk. Oh, it's still here. Thank goodness. We can go clumsy trucking. Go for a bit of a different look as well. Maybe a red and orange thing can work. Let's see. Can we hide something? A bit more... A bit rougher, maybe. It also says in the change log that this uh, map, Raw X, comes with like six uh, exclusive skins for the Scania S, the new Scania, I think that is. Scania S and R, but I didn't see it. I'm not sure if that's a different file or maybe it's not included in the 1.36 version. I would, I would bet it more like that. So many different styles here. Thanks to Cast. Ooh. Tractor trailers in GTA 5 look more like a truck from Europe. Oh, really? I wouldn't know. I like the sound of this engine. Can we try that one? I've always been curious about that trailer. 
It's only recently that I've seen it. When do you usually use this kind of trailer? It's pretty interesting. Not matching at all, but very interesting look. Not a big fan of the sound when you let go of the throttle. Yeah, the, the like the super uh, loud sighing sound. I'm not sure how realistic that is. Maybe with the crack and variant, it's really like that. The inside view on trucks in GTA 5 look more like the inside of your truck. Ah, I see. Maybe a European uh, worked on it. Oh, and looks like we have floating trailers and cows without legs. <laughs> we found you! How did he get from uh, southern region to Ukraine? There's even a blimp and some light shows in there. Fancy. Now I don't think I'll be able to attach to that, but we can at least try. We can at least try. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh look at that, actually worked. Hmm, now I'm not sure if it's compatible with advanced trailer coupling though. I actually have one more surprise, but it's not ready yet. I was hoping it would make it for today's stream, but maybe on Sunday we will see something. I'm not so sure. Can't promise anything. But soon we should get it. That's how the trailer looks. Actually, it's very aerodynamic, huh? You see the, the slope is actually pretty consistent. Very nice. Not color matchy, but very interesting design. Uh, did I attach it already? Not yet. Did I? Oh, I, I did. I just... Uh, let's see if I can attach it normally. <laughs> I'm actually getting eaten with the trailer. Nope, doesn't work. Oh, it does. It does. It does. Just have to be very slow and very precise. How sound from the one video you did on the island. Where was that? Was that in Corsica? Can't uh, remember exactly where it is. It's too loud. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Might be creative freedom from <laughs> Krishbo. I'm not so much of a fan of it either. But I just uh, chalk it up to exotic sound. The new island, nice. Thought it was your mobility bus. <clears throat> Alright, so let's see. How do we go? Can we pass by any exciting uh, roads on the way? Let's have a look at the map quickly. Oh, that sounds very good. I can actually make the sounds louder, guys, if you prefer. Is this too weak for you? Whoa. Oh, crap. Alright. Yeah, the engine growl is absolutely amazing. I love it too. It's going to be a straight one, 177 kilometers each one. It doesn't look like a highway, because the highway seems to be M3. So that might be a rough road there. It might be a good primer for the trip. Then we'll see how we can explore the rest of the way. Let's follow that route. So I don't have Project Next Gen. I don't think I have any other graphics mods aside from Natural Lux. So 
So unfortunately, we will not be passing through the same bridge that we passed by a while ago. What is this M? It's very nice. I wonder if they made a custom asset just for that. Oh, looks like we can get a bit of a treat though. Nice bridge. I'll take that. Alright, drive safely. Have a good one, man. Thanks for uh, the fix. Appreciate it. Made it just in time. Catch you next time. That is beautiful. Uh, that is something I'll definitely, gladly take a photo of. Yes, indeed, selfie time. Just getting a bit of a view. But now this most looks more like it. Hey KM, welcome back. We are currently in Ukraine. In Kiev. Oh, that would be nice. With a view of the TV tower thing like that in the distance. That actually kind of works. So let's get a close-up like this. Let's get an overhead shot like that. That's very wide, like so. Shoo. Nicely done. Do I hear the music playing? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do too. That is music from Abstraction. I think it's abstractionmusic.com website, if I remember correctly. Should be mentioned below. I just want to check him out. So I'm looking mostly around 50% utilization on CPU and GPU, all cores even. So I'm not sure where the frame drops are coming from because I should have enough capacity for that. GPU memory is 6 gigs out of 8. Yeah, I think it's working. And this is currently with 400% scaling and Ultra SMAA. So this is top settings at the moment. Although that, that being said, the anti-aliasing is still not the best, is it? We've, um, I've been seeing a lot of complaints from hardcore gamers. Especially from the NVIDIA Inspector fans. They are very used to uh, good anti-aliasing from NVIDIA Inspector and now they can't use it anymore as of 1.36. Let's see if we can fit through with this roundabout. While in Warsaw, I saw a truck, a Scania R, actually a 4 Series I think, using the roundabout like this and yeah, it's, it's uh, normal that the trucks actually use that inner, inner curb there. For the trailer so that's uh, an accepted practice that's the only way they could fit in the roundabout i think that's specifically made for them so i don't feel bad anymore when i use that <clears throat> oh, one more Loving this one NVIDIA Inspector, uh, you cannot use the anti-aliasing settings from there anymore because of DirectX 11. It was only possible from DirectX 9. Natural lock screenshot type indeed. Take it up with them. They say they, they say you can't, they say it's not working anymore. I don't really use it, so I don't have a clue. 
but that's what they all say so if you look in the SES forums there is a thread for the NVIDIA inspector you can post there and uh, debate with them hey I'm Dal welcome to the stream but that's what they say and it's pre pretty consistent it's not one person it's like more than 10 people have said it already they say DirectX 9 as of DirectX 10 was it or 11 Microsoft requires the application itself to handle anti-aliasing that's why Nvidia inspector even if you force anti-aliasing settings will not work anymore because as of DirectX 11 or with DirectX 11 the anti-aliasing should now be controlled by the application itself you can't force it that's their version You don't have an account on the SES forums? Ah, interesting. There's also a discussion on ROX. If you have an account there. <clears throat> Probably not. But yeah. Do you know different? It, it still works? I think I've only seen one other person say that it still works with DirectX 11. I, I, someone on cha on uh, YouTube told me that when I was looking for the when I was asking for advice on anti-aliasing settings, he mentioned it still works with DirectX 11. Oh, that sound beautiful. Although I am noticing my GPU is uh, really giving an effort here and I'm not sure why it was having no problems inside the city and now on the countryside it's uh, almost at 90% sometimes I'm loving the view though no complaints here and the roads are just perfectly uh, just well maintained enough Hey Peach Angel, thank you for joining. How are you? Works fine for you. Yeah. If anti-aliasing works for you, then that's good. Maybe your Threadripper is making things work, even if they normally don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I tried NVIDIA Inspector before, if you guys remember in one stream. We tried it in ATS and I didn't like the effect, so I just uh, didn't go with it. But some, some of the people, some of the folks are really very supportive of it. They really like it. And comparing it with the uh, default anti-aliasing from 1.36, they really don't like the one from 1.36. They say SMAA is a very primitive um, way of anti-aliasing, just marginally better than the original MLAA. I think that's true. I think that's true. So I hope SCS is continuing their efforts on making a nice anti-aliasing option. Nice varied uh, AI traffic here. Makes for a more exciting road trip. Why is there a horse on the road? Why not? They're from New Zealand. Nice. Neighbor. <laughs> what time is it there now? Let me guess. Um, 11.41? No, I'm not really sure of the time zone. Do you only have one time zone in NZ? I have a friend who lives there now. They love it. They love it there. Absolutely love the vibes in New Zealand. It's 141. Wow. Didn't know it was that uh, far. So like five hours? 
So what is that? UTC plus 13? Goodness, didn't know it uh, went up that far. Jack stream. Oh, nice. Where is Jack, by the way? How was his stream? Sorry, I wasn't able to join. I was working yet again. <laughs> Goodness, the w this has been so far the fastest week ever. Like, I just blinked. And it's been almost a week since I was in Warsaw. It's just been super busy at work. Working the whole day. I, I wasn't even able to go to the gym. I haven't gone to the gym yet this entire week. But hopefully next week it's not as busy. <sighs> we'll see. But yeah, it's seasonal. Very nice, cozy country road. I want to take a, to take a photo of those uh, houses from afar. It's very nice. And the power lines, I must say, the power lines are very nicely done. Updated by SCS with 1.36. No jagged edges at all. That's very nice. So I think they are taking a quite a different approach. Instead of improving the anti-aliasing in general, which might be a bit difficult, I'm not sure. They are working on updating the models or textures or whatever so that the jagged edges are minimal. Never knew I worked out. Isn't it obvious? I'm uh, I'm offended. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I work out so I work out for the purpose of uh, I mainly work out so I can eat <laughs> what I want <laughs> not for six pack abs or anything no, for also for health reasons but yeah mainly so I can eat whatever I want and not feel guilty about it Last night, speaking of eating what you want, last night we had to, we went out for dinner and a bottle of wine <laughs> to relax a bit because it's been so stressful at work. Goodness. Although I must say, even if it's stressful, it's, uh, it's really nice, you know, uh, having the, the brain uh, stimulated that way. Very challenging. But it's like, uh, that it's not sustainable. It's very... Uh, high intensity high uh, high high stress high pressure environment it's 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 addictive but it's not healthy for the long term so i think it's uh, from time to time it's good to challenge the brain exercise it a bit but uh, not, not long term definitely not long term Um, I enjoyed Warsaw, but I actually didn't have a break. I went there for work. So my only free day was, I think I only had one free day, basically, before my flight. That's when I went to the park and just took some pictures. I'm trying to see how the rain looks like. I can't see much, because I saw that Kirill made an update for, for for the shaders. I think he removed them actually, huh? Maybe that's why. Because in ATS, the rain shaders or something are broken. I, I don't know the technical details, but basically rain is broken. Rain is black or something. It doesn't look good. So he had to remove them. Maybe that's why we're not seeing any raindrops except on the windshield. Jack is rearranging his computer desk area. Oh, thanks. Thanks for reposting. Ah, is that for VR? Maybe. Oh, exciting. Looking forward to that one. By the way, have you guys seen this new video from Squirrel? He has a new video series coming up. Actually, it just started. Uh, VR 180, I think he calls it. Quite intriguing. 
I think he's transitioning from simulators to actual real life uh, uh, stuff like farming in real life, driving a train in real life, driving a race car in real life, and he has like uh, 180 degrees VR cameras for recording. So you can use your VR headset or Google Cardboard to watch. Very interesting stuff, very next level. Like personally, I'm not so much uh, interested yet because I prefer more the simulators because I know that simulators I can get into as well. Like, how do you say, I can relate to simulators more than in real life. But I mean, real life is real life. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's definitely something. I might try watching the, the first one. I haven't watched it yet. Ooh, good luck reading those guys. Actually, the roads have been very nice so far, huh? They have been a bit... There, are, there have been cracks and whatnot, but uh, in terms of feel, they're not bad. They're wide enough, they're... They're not bumpy at all. So I think what Jay was saying is correct. It's not a bumpy Friday. That's good. Google Cardboard. <laughs> it looks funny as well. And it's a very, uh, how do you say, rudimentary. I think that's our stop, but I'll just pass through the discoverable. It's a very rudimentary device. Literally just cardboard. And then it has a lens or two lenses for your eyes. But it works and it's very affordable. It gives you VR capabilities with your phone for a very, very, very cheap price. I'm just not sure if it's available here in Asia. And, but if you're in the US, then you should have no problems getting it. Mercedes Benz. That trailer fit under the bridge. <laughs> Actually, I just closed my eyes and uh, hoped that it would. I'm not sure even if the if there's a hitbox for this trailer. Not sure how it works. If you can make it like transparent or something. Not transparent but uh, clipping. No clipping. Play ETS2. Got loco on 61 tons. Ooh. This is a very tight junction. See if this will fit in. Climb the curb a little. And that's good enough. Yeah. That works. Fif 61 tons. Doing 50 R1 since 7 a.m. this morning. 38 hours left. Wow. How, how far is that? Uh, how long is the journey in terms of distance? It's amazing. Good luck. In which trailer pack did that train come from? Chazzy Cat? Must be pretty heavy, huh? Actually, it has a steerable axle as well, this trailer. Straightforward working, I think. There you go. Loving that engine sound. It works. How can you tell? That, that's nice. That's great to hear. 
You guys will love that. Excellent. 182 kilometers, very short trip. Ooh, that's nice. Is that new? Creative. I'll have to look. Because that is one heavy trailer. I don't think it is new though. Kharkiv, Poltava, Konotok, Krupitz. Kharkiv is new. Caviar. Let's go take that one. Let's pick a different color. Something more apt for our color combination. That one could work. 371 kilometers and we can pass through some cities on the way win-win with custom AA settings interesting yeah that's very interesting first time I actually second time I heard that that it works that's good then maybe they're basing it on what Microsoft said and haven't tested it themselves not sure trailer drop problem is that from 1.36 i thought that was map related interesting <laughs> four or five around four thousand plus kilometers nice So you use the same settings. Are you in 1.36 as well? Why doesn't that work? Hmm. Maybe the chassis is a bit too low. Normally I'm able to attach to this trailer, no problem. Doesn't seem like it's floating. There you go. That's a very close one, though. That's a very close one. Very tight fit. Yeah, that'll work. Right. Let's see. Lubni, Poltava, and Kharkiv. Yeah, and there's a border there to Russia, to Belgorod. That works for me. Let's try it. 80 S U R in 1.36. Ooh, have a good night, Sounder. Thanks for dropping by. Catch you next time, man. Nice. And what settings do you use in NVIDIA Inspector? The 4X uh, MSAA, SGSS, and all the other acronyms? I'm not really familiar with them with the compatibility bits and whatnot. Roex now has three new connections to Ross map. Nice. I haven't tried any of the map mods yet in 1.36, but I heard that it's working quite well. I think Wombat has them enabled except for pro mods. I think everything is working. Working, but maybe not optimal, because I think there are errors in the game log. Look at you, elitist. <laughs> Taking jabs at my rig. No, I'm not planning on enabling NVIDIA Inspector anytime soon. I don't know. I don't like the effect. Or at least I didn't like it last time I tried it. And I got... For some reason, I got poorer FPS. Which is very strange. Because it should improve FPS or at the very least maintain it. So I remember initially, I tried it and I loved it, 
And then I, at some point, I removed it. Hmm. And then when I tried it back like a year or so later, it's, it wasn't as good anymore. So no clue. Paris rebuilt in 1.36. It's been a while since I, re since I enabled that. Speaking of Paris, I haven't done the Fernbus video yet. Lots of negative feedback for that fern bus video, unfortunately. Guess I guess. Which, but they are very fair comments. There's uh, a lot to do on the ML side for some fixes. It's not as accurate as people were expecting or hoping for. If I enjoy it. Yeah, no, and I know. I have no issues with the, the feedback. I mean, the, the feedback is very reasonable. And it's not about me, it's about the game. But yeah, they are very uh, uh, justified comments. And I have the same comments actually. So I have the same concerns. So I'm trying to give them more time to update the game and make it more polished. Because I think Paris is very. Uh, I think it should be very well done based on the map. But I'm hoping for more fixes before I give it another go. Maybe I'll give it one more week and I'll, I'll try again. Because just. Earlier this week, they released an update, a beta version, to fix some of the major bugs they've found since last week. So I think one more week might do the trick. And I missed my spot. This is what Arias was saying. With Raw X, you don't have the no boundaries thing. Uh, you don't have the boundaries thing. So you don't have those X's which prevent you from... Uh, going somewhere or knowing that something is ending so you really have to look at your map he's not a fan of those X's apparently you turn hype hey da long time no see how have you been driving a mercedes 625 hp nice and I missed it again. Ah, because it's a dirt road. No wonder. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, busy and tired, but okay. I can relate. <laughs> I can relate very much. Doing good, pretty busy and tired, but happy overall. <laughs> but yeah, as I was mentioning a while ago, this feels like the, the fastest week ever. Like I cannot believe that it's Friday already. Ooh, there's like a... what? what's a baby cow called? A calf? Or is that a horse? Is that a baby horse? And we have a baby cow. It's there. Let's take a photo here. It's nice. Passing through some side roads. Non flying cow. A baby horse is a foal. Ah, there you go. Thanks. Got that right the first time. We are somewhere in the middle of Ukraine. In a new area of Romania extended. Version 2.3 now. 
Oh, I forgot to bring back the badge. I don't have engine badges in front. This is quite interesting. Halloween game. Oh yeah, I have to still I still have to set it up. I haven't even looked at it yet. Hate Halloween. I'm not a fan either. <laughs> but I'll try to uh, be more accommodating. Can't remember the last time. I think I only did like check or treat once. Maybe I don't know. 20 plus years ago. And there was a time here. I think it was here already. I was like hiding from the kids. Some people were like knocking on the door. But I didn't have anything prepared, so I was pretending that no one was home. <laughs> Scrooge mucked up. <clears throat> yeah, bumpy roads indeed. Good thing we can still uh, go at 50 kilometers here. Labor weekend on Tuesday. Ooh, okay. Very different uh, Labor Day weekends. Or Labor Day. I heard something. And I'm not sure if that was a plane. A missile or something else. Don't hear it now anymore though. Hmm. Not bothered by people dressing up trying to be scary. Just don't like the ads. That you stop level CGI. I just don't like all the uh, the scary stuff. People wearing costumes is fine, but the scary movies and scary everything, I don't like. Me, no likey. So I'm scared of that. Everyone in New Zealand gets paid on Saturday. That sounds good. I think there's a... Uh... You guys definitely heard that, right? I don't see anything though. Maybe a, like a, a fighter jet? A sonic boom? It shouldn't be Chernobyl because we are... Where are we facing? We should be facing like east or something. Chernobyl should be somewhere northwest. A jet fly over a random road event. Hey Skyward. It's a great bump in Charlie Brown. Maybe. Ah. As long as it doesn't get in our way, we're fine. Still not seeing it. Must be too high up, be beyond the clouds or something. Cloud cover. Stealth plane. Oh, scary. <laughs> Do you guys think there's actually stealth planes like that now? 
Like, you literally cannot see them even with your own eyes. That's scary. Nowadays, what I'm scared about is the... The... What's the term? Proliferation? It's a fancy term for it. The the widespread use of drones. Like they are very it's a very powerful and scary technology, huh? Flight and being able to do anything with those drones. They can go from spying to weaponizing and everything. And they can go anywhere because they can fly and they're super small and they can be remote controlled so like scary stuff i think there was a movie which featured that right um what was that movie with gerard butler and was it morgan freeman something has fallen i, I haven't watched it but my dad and my brother said they, it was really good i remember watching the trailer and it was like weaponized drones and I think in real life it already happened, right? One of the the oil uh, things. What was that? There was an attack on one of the oil something. So we, we like the world uh, lost a huge chunk of its oil supply or something like that. I remember those were said they were drone attacks. Yeah, it's it's quite scary concept, huh? Olympus has fallen, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. I think the, the the starting scene of them getting attacked in the trailer was by weaponized drones. Scary concept there. And even in just the normal drones, huge hazards to flying. They're very powerful. I wonder. I was looking at the power lines, they look very good. Minimal jagged edges. Can't say the same about those uh, things in the distance though. Shimmering stuff. But yeah, it's quite uh, scary. That new technology. I wonder how they'll what they'll develop to regulate that or I don't know monitor or I have no clue the world is changing as it always has been that sounded like an old guy uh, something an old guy would say dang it really getting old most modern air forces have drones that fly high or controlled thousands of miles away. Yeah. Yes. Where was that? I, I saw a um, series with that. Wait a minute. I'm trying to remember what that series was. But yeah, they were like doing drone strikes on known targets, so to speak. I want to explore that, but I think it's a bit too late. Oh, that's fine. I'll make it up next time. The Reaper drone in the USAF. That might be it. Yeah, that might be the one I saw as well. Oh, there we go. Finally saw it. There we go. Anyone know what those are? F-16s or something? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not familiar with the fighter jets. MiGs. Aren't those the, the ones in Red Alert? This is very nice view. I like it. Very nice colors. It just works. 
it's a very natural environment this look massive ethics discussion about it i can imagine yeah i can imagine it's a very complicated topic speaking of complicated topics what is the news with brexit not to go full political but isn't there like a deadline did i hear that right people in, in warsaw were talking about it and everyone was like oh having to scramble because of brexit like the company is uh, having to ship stuff <laughs> they're like doing last minute shipping to the uk because after this deadline i think what was it november biscuit <laughs> i don't think anyone knows what's happening at the moment yeah so I, because i think after november or whenever the deadline is they cannot ship to the uk anymore because of the new rules or something so everyone is scrambling to get in as much as they can before that deadline it's quite a real problem Thirty first October. Ah, I see. The Canadians are not scrambling. That's good. <laughs> trade we can trade with penguins and polar bears. Yeah, because you guys are nice people. Everyone wants to trade with you. <laughs> no issue there. That was a micro stutter right there. Doesn't happen very often though. So that's good. It has tax concessions anyway. They extended the date again. Did they? When is it now? It's not anymore November 1st. I think it's just too many question marks about that topic. Like we, we had a guy who was, uh, how was it? We had a guy from the UK, so he's English, I think. Yeah, a very very strong accent. Bridge shot. And he is working in Warsaw at the moment. But then I think he's planning a vacation. So somewhere, let's say today, let's say today he goes on vacation and he goes back after November. And he's like wondering, will they still allow me in inside to, to enter Poland after November? <laughs> because by November 1st, things would be different. So those are the kind of questions that uh, I think people are wondering about those details. Jack. Changes topic. Needs to apply to the EU settlement scheme for Poland. Oh, is there such a thing already? That's nice. Then he must be just like half joking, probably. Because it would be too uh, far fetched to think of those, those problems really happening. I hope not. We'll see. <laughs> For no, we're not picking on Poland. Definitely not. I was just there last week. How can I pick on them? It's not about the Polish. It's about the, the new rules. There's still a lot of questions about it. How that entire thing works. Yeah, I guess he will. They'll work it out. How do you know someone is Polish? Can you tell just by looking? at them. I know I asked this once 
uh, I had a German colleague, colleague and I asked him, do you recognize people from different parts of Europe just by looking at them? And his answer was, you cannot unless they speak. But once they speak, you know already, which makes sense. But by the looks, I think the, the features are quite similar. Scraping one system to make a new system leads to mass confusion everywhere. That's very true. Yeah. I hope they make a way. I hope they find a way. It's going to be very messy for quite some time. I can imagine. F hashtag find a way. <laughs> that should be the new thing. Here we go. In Poltava. Stick to 50. I haven't seen any cops though. Not many cops around here. Few decades later. <laughs> Isn't there a very uh, famous clip that's being used everywhere? I think it was from what? SpongeBob or something? Few decades later. <laughs> Maybe not decades. Proper city this time. Nice. A few minutes later. Oh, that's the one. That's the one. One here. Thank you. Biscuits are in. I like the sound of that. Let's go with that then. Need lights? We have lights already. People walking. That guy just hanging out. Very different looking buildings. I like it. I wonder if these are from Baltic assets. Very nice. Very high quality look. Doesn't look washed out or anything. There's even a special statue there. Cool stuff. You got Basim. Basim 18 for console, is it? For Xbox? Congrats. How are you liking it? CNG bus task. I think I got stuck there at, w at one time as well, but it was due to a bug. You like Fern bus simulator and tourist bus simulator? I like them too. They're, they have their own quirks, but overall, they're very nice games. Still waiting on the tourist bus sim update though. I'm not sure if it went live already. But I mean, DLC France is here. So we'll check it out. Probably next week. Thanks a lot, Foxes. Appreciate you guys hanging out. Enjoy your dinner or supper. What's the difference anyway? I know there was a joke there. <laughs> There's a joke there somewhere. My dad used to love telling it. What's the difference between dinner and supper? Does anyone know? I'm not sure if it's like a Filipino joke, but I don't think so. I think it's a universal or English one. Leave our supper dinner alone. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Did 
This guy is pretty brave. Good luck to you. Supper is a snack dinner. It's a meal in New Zealand. Snack dinner. Do you have it before or after dinner? Yeah, because I was I, I, I get confused by that sometimes. There's a like in the hotel sometimes there's like a dinner menu and there's a supper menu. It's like uh is that the same? Are they not? Like a midnight snack, but before midnight. Less former and earlier. Oh, earlier. Okay, I thought it was later. Generally cold. Dinner is later. Formal in general consists of soup and main course. Ah. Supper is before dinner. I see. I see. So, around what time do you usually have supper? Is it like a 6 p.m. thing? In the Philippines, we have uh, normally we call it merienda, which, which sounds very Spanish. It might be a Spanish word. But merienda is something we have snacks in between meals, in between lunch and dinner. So around 4 p.m., we'll have merienda. Like uh, tea break or I know, high tea, I think. So is that how we call it? High tea? Supper was for kids, dinner was for adults. <laughs> yeah, something like high tea, just maybe differently called. Digital ones and zeros. I knew you were a bit on the robotic side, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of robotic side, I, I, I read an article today. Um, saying that Google made a breakthrough in quantum computing or something. It sounded very fancy, but their claim was they were able to do something like a random number generator kind of thing with, in which a normal computer would need like, uh, I don't know, 10,000 years to do it. And they, their quantum computer was able to make it in like three minutes or something like that. So very fast, very, very fast. They're still not clear, or there, there's still no clear application for it, but they say it's a huge step forward. And uh, I remembered that because Jay was mentioning ones and zeros, and they say the difference between the traditional computing and a quantum computer is that normally a computer holds like ones and zeros, right? Either a one or a zero, storing one or a zero. But the quantum, I don't know, qubit, I think it's called, holds ones and zeros at the same time. Something along those lines. At least that's what the article says. Very fancy stuff. It would be interesting to see how those get applied in the future. Very nice shot here. Beautiful. One small MB for quantum computer. Humongous GB for a normal one. Could be, yeah. Sounds very fancy, huh? Also, is anyone keeping up to date with the AMD stuff? I've been very interested with the AMD graphics cards. They seem to be very good, very affordable. The only bad thing I've seen so far is that their encoder, their video encoder is absolute crap at the moment. Compa comparing it with what Nvidia has in Vink, I think it absolutely sucks. But if they manage to find a solution to that, if they manage uh, to, to make it compete with NVENC, I might actually think of switching to AMD. A Ryzen and... Uh, how do, what do they call their graphics card? Dang it! That would be nice. Yeah. And I'm hoping that they can find a way forward. But yeah, a lot of people are have made it uh, 
visible. I'm sure AMD is aware of it. In the the, the video I saw said, uh, yeah, for sure AMD is working on it. So maybe let's give it a year or so. Riding less on Sunday morning. Riding as in riding a horse. So the, the highest end AMD is what? 5700X something? Oh, look at that. Lots of fighter jets here. Just zooming about. And I think that highest end AMD GPU at the moment is equivalent to a. What? A 2070? A 2070 Super? Something like that. I don't think they have a higher end one yet. Once AMD, but to put some pressure on Nvidia to lower prices. <laughs> Yo, that's very good, yes. Actually, they, they already did, right? That's why the Supers came out. Because when they were planning their release, that would have absolutely made the NVIDIA counterparts obsolete in terms of pricing. So they came up with these super graphics cards, which uh, performed better for cheaper, is it? Or just marginally more expensive or same price? Can't remember the details. But that was, I think, the main reason why they needed to release supers. They can retain market share and stuff like that. That is a very beautiful sunset. Pro WX X200 series. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Is that for consumers or like uh, something else? Most I'm hearing is the C5700 XT, if I remember correctly. That is beautiful. Natural Lux, thank you. <clears throat> Don't yawn, it'll make me yawn too. <laughs> There's something psychological about that, right? When someone yawns, you get to... You tend to yawn as well. And the... Uh, I think there was a, a series like that. They say... Psychopaths? Don't have that tendency. Because they don't have empathy. So it's like one test of checking if the person is a psychopath or not. If they don't yawn with you, that might be a sign. Although they must, may just mimic it. Geek talk. <laughs> well, uh, might be in the wrong channel then. Unless you didn't see the name. I think it says Clumsy Geek there somewhere. I like the buildings. In very low rise. Yeah. Yeah, when I was in Warsaw, the, the office area, it was like a, um, an office district. So many different uh, workers there, offices. But everything was low rise. And I was telling my colleagues, like, uh, wow, like, the highest floor is six. Because, like, I'm not used to that. Like in Singapore, if you go to an office district, the, the buildings would be as high as you go, right? Because we have very limited real estate space. So you can't go horizontal, you go vertical. <laughs> but that's very, very bad when it comes to fire drills. Imagine taking like 30 flights of stairs or something. Dang it. That's going to hurt in the morning. And yeah, we, we had our fire drill again. Every time I go to Warsaw, we have a fire drill. When I went there three years ago, the office had a fire drill. And uh, yeah, when I was there last week, we'd have, we had a fire drill on Friday and right in the middle of a, a call. Like we were working on an issue. We were like 100% concentration and suddenly this, this super loud alarm sounds had to go down, had to wait like 30 minutes or an hour. Oh, absolutely broke momentum. 
gave us a good excuse to stay out though. Very nice weather, thankfully. So, not complaining that much. Just a little. <clears throat> you log on and watch YouTube and log off again. Yeah, not everyone is inclined to the geeky stuff. Some people just want to see things work. Some people just want to use the things. And that's completely understandable. How far do we have to go? Let's see. Speeding. Oh, we're almost there. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> Don't to see me crash. Thanks for your goodwill. There we go again with the uh, one of those sneaky borderless roads. It's actually a dead end. I really like this view though. Very nice roads here actually. I was expecting more mud runner level roads. But I'm kind of thankful that they aren't. Or maybe you have just haven't reached that part yet. We'll see. <laughs> also in Warsaw. They had me like so I was there five working days. Two out of the five working days, we had lunch at an Asian place. <laughs> they were very apologetic, but not so much. <laughs> but they wanted to see my reaction because uh, they wanted to gauge if the the Asian uh, the Asian places were authentic, if they tasted very Asian, or if it was like fake. Surprised to say, though, they they were actually pretty good. Somehow, I can't explain it. I just love this view. I'm loving these lampposts in particular. <clears throat> I don't know why. They're very scenic. And, uh, okay. Looks like we deliver through here. Interesting. Yeah, I think so. It's a little bit of a side street here. This makes me remember that place in the UK somewhere to the north i think it's somewhere in scotland you guys remember the name the, the new new place from pro mods where you have to like reverse it in to enter it's a very small area goodness this is actually going to be a very nice pick let me take a shot take a shot here If only we had enough light, that is. Uh, that kind of works. It would have been better if it was daytime. But that can work too. Too bad. Gates head back streets. There are even people just walking. Suprema. I think that's a new company. I don't think I've seen that before. Must be. Oh crap. Okay. Hmm. Well, if we can go through there, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Oh, and we can actually go around through here. Yeah, it's not it's not that uh, skimpy in here. Should be relatively fine, I think. Yep, Singapore. Ooh, very nice here actually. Very large. Uh, commercial zone. Wouldn't have expected it from that very tight road there. 
I guess there must be a main road somewhere, but only this like side street has been modeled in. Sparking is no problem for a clumsy. <laughs> I'm not so sure now. I'm not so sure now. Let's see if I can make it somehow. enough one of your favorite t-shirts was from Singapore what did what was the design Is it something like I love SG oh I don't think that's going to be enough might actually hit the guy we'll see yep I think we will Blue Dragon Siamese. Most of the people speak English, but majority speak uh, Mandarin as well, Chinese. There are. It's like a melting pot of cultures too, though. Lots of Malays, lots of Indians, lots of Filipinos. But predominantly Chinese, I think, overall. Oh, that's going to be too much. Should have turned a bit earlier. A lot earlier, that is. Dang it. But, uh, we do have space here. I speak English because of you. What do you mean? So you can understand me? Yes, definitely. There you go. Those, I think, are the three main languages. But somewhere I saw a stat which said like 90 plus percent of the people are Chinese. Not so sure about the accuracy of that stat. Should be somewhere around there though. There we go. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Probably, yeah, I see a lot of uh, uh, culture from the UK. I switched to Tagalog once. Oh yeah, the blowback I got from that, right? The April Fool's episode, I didn't, I didn't repeat it again. <laughs> I got a lot of unsubs there, I think. A lot of downvotes and uh, hatey comments. <laughs> One of the cleanest cities in the world. Nice, no idea though. Yeah, I th it is one of the cleanest cities, if not the cleanest city. Definitely one of top three, I would say. Um, and the way you get work here is you... So it depends on the country, like in Australia, in New Zealand, I think you you first apply for permanent residency, and then once you are there, you find work. In Singapore, it's the opposite. You find work first, so by online means and whatnot. And if when you find work, you'll they'll apply a pass for you so you can live here, and from there you can spend some time here, and then after a while you can request for uh, you can apply for a permanent residency. Which they are very strict in at the moment. I'm not sure how it works. But for Filipinos, it seems like they are very, uh, uh, not very open. I haven't uh, heard of a Filipino getting their permanent residency in quite some time. Since it's like, I don't know, five years or something. 
but depends on the race, I think. Uh, they don't say the official uh, uh, criteria, but I think they have a quota about race uh, ratio somewhere. They have to maintain a certain balance. That's my point of view. Can get arrested for not flushing the toilet. Do they? I'm not so sure. <laughs> yeah, nowadays everything is auto flush, so at least that might not be as uh, dangerous anymore. No, this is not GTA. Just that are there. And now it's very dark. like bus sim. Bus sim there's actually a, a consequence when you do that. Really hurts your wallet. It's raining again. Goodness. might be yeah I know there are some certain laws here that are quite interesting quite intriguing to be honest I haven't uh, studied them but basically it's it's uh, I think it's a very common sense approach like I haven't got I haven't gotten caught yet <laughs> I hope not I hope it doesn't happen but yeah, it's like uh, if you're a decent human being, don't litter, don't uh, be a nuisance to other people, mind your own business, stay in your lane, stuff like that, and they should be fine. So if they're not like, they don't have like uh, hardcore rules that you really have to study. It's just be a decent human being and you should be fine. I think the hard part right now is finding work because they are really limiting the, the, the work for foreigners because there is a large complaint from the locals that uh, they are not getting jobs because of foreigners so the policy on foreigners is much more strict these years than in the past that is why at any point I am preparing to go back to the Philippines there's no permanence. That's the unfortunate thing. Because even if I have like a work pass, the work pass expires every like two or three years at most. So you have to reapply. And if you get unlucky or if something changes, they can decide not to renew it. And you can like request for it again, but if they really don't want to, then you don't have, can't have anything to do with it, and uh, have to leave. So that's the that's the pickle right there. Do we have a sleeping area? Yes, we do. Yes, thank you. I think it does. Yeah, like I said, I, I didn't really study it. <laughs> yeah, staying in the house is the safest bet. Even when people come knocking on your door for trick or treat, just don't open it so you're safe. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try, definitely. Just have to find the time. 
to do it <laughs> in a very hectic week but I am so excited for the weekend it's coming it's coming and uh, I can't wait I cannot wait speaking of crimes wait a minute let's go and find our next spot Belgorod we can go to Belgorod, yes, and from there let's find another job. Let's cross over to Russia and see what it looks like. And from there we can pro probably travel north or something. Let's see. Let's go with that. I didn't see the... The expiry. Let's double check. 45 minutes and that is uh, one hour and 23 minutes away is it no no that's not it that's the distance of the trip itself the thing is ah very very near okay no problem three kilometers away Actually, I don't think I have my mirror set correctly. I just noticed. Didn't even configure it. <clears throat> so speaking of crime, someone called me yesterday. It was a very strange call. But nowadays, these kinds of things happen more and more. It was a Viber call, I think. Do you guys use Viber where you're from? Because each country has their own like preferred uh, communication app, right? What either country uses WhatsApp more often than not or Facebook Messenger. But Viber is one of those messaging apps. And I got a call from Viber and it was uh, it said like I Changi. Uh, I Changi is uh, like Changi International Airport. So it's the, the airport, it's the store in Changi. And then they, they were saying like, uh, Oh, congratulations, you won, an, uh, you won the lucky draw for like $50,000 or something. And then they were asking like, So what, uh, what bank do you have your uh, account in? Which bank do you have? I was like, hmm. This doesn't sound right. Although the, the caller ID said I Changi and there's even like a picture there of the Changi shop. Not sure how they managed that. Probably some tinkering with Viper. It's like, huh. So I was listening and in the background I was hearing like someone was saying in the background, okay, someone was talking as well, saying the same lines like, oh congratulations, you won fifty thousand dollars. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And, and the number the number was like plus one so plus one is like from US right that's but that's probably not true probably just a number I don't know, random number thing there you go yeah Viber WhatsApp line WeChat Telegram all the stuff you can think of in the Philippines Viber is very famous but it also depends on which circles you belong to some people like Kakao Talk or uh, Telegram. In in Singapore, it's mostly predominantly WhatsApp. Like almost everywhere, WhatsApp is used. A non-banking bank. I, I didn't give any bank at all, and I, I just said. Uh, I I just told him, oh, it's uh, lucky, huh? So someone else won fifty thousand <laughs> because I was hearing in the background, and he had like a long pause, like three seconds pause. He was thinking what to say, and then he said, what, what? And then I, I just. Uh, I just hung up the phone. <laughs> Look at that. Get those scam calls here all the time. Say it's done. There's blood everywhere. <laughs> oh. That works. Oh, I just thought of a disaster. A disaster happened to me yesterday. I was so scared. But it's nothing about uh, blood, thankfully. It's a disaster about coffee. So I am totally addicted to coffee, right? And I, I, I brew my own cup every day, twice a day. 
one in the morning, one after lunch. So yesterday was no different. For in the morning, I brew. It was fine. I used my new, new electric grinder. You get some IRS calls on your US numbers. <laughs> so you have a US number. I, I should check your number against that guy who called me. <laughs> you might have something to do with it. <laughs> yeah. So I was uh, brewing my second cup yesterday afternoon. And suddenly I heard this super loud uh, sound from the grinder. I mean, the grinder itself is very loud, but you can tell if something is wrong. And this sounded very different. So I was like, letting it try. So I, I was thinking, it's probably getting blocked somewhere. So I, I, I gave it a couple of seconds and it was not budging. The beans were still uh, grouped up there and they were not going down. So I had to like, uh, empty it out, you know, um, tip it over empty out all the beans manually and then lo and behold when I emptied everything out there was a piece of rock as in rock or stone or whatever lodged in the middle of the burst of the grinder no wonder it was stuck I took some photos of it and I was trying to fix it for like an hour or so because it was really lodged in there, like the burrs. Because how it works is the grinder has like two parts and they kind of grind against each other. Oh, uh, Chakayar doesn't like that. So so the, the design is made for absolute... Uh, the design is built so that the curves, the nooks and crannies of each burr is made so that everything goes down and nothing goes is spit back up. So with the rock lodged in there, it was so hard to pry it upwards. Like there is no other way but down through the grinder. And it wouldn't fit and the grinder wasn't strong enough to grind through it. Oh goodness, this is this not working. One sec. So I was uh, getting scared because uh, my grinder was uh, almost just two months old. And I think it broke. At this point, I am. Um, uh, <laughs> I uh, don't think I can do anything to not be Jadard. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll leave you be. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I was not sure what to do. So I took my screwdriver out, was trying to pry out the, the rock, but it really wouldn't budge. I tried disassembling the grinder. If I could go at it from a different angle, I, I couldn't find any angle that was working. Oh, that, that's actually quite nice. Libelula. Hmm, not familiar with the company. I do like that though. TV tower kind of thing. <coughs> and so uh, I sent an email. Because I was thinking, where could it, where could that rock have come from, right? Like, uh, I was thinking maybe the the burrs, the grinder itself, got chipped and maybe it, it like it ate itself. If you get, if you get that, what I mean, like maybe the grinders got chipped and then a part of it that got chipped off got stuck in itself. So I was thinking maybe that's what happened. But when I was looking at the grinder itself, it was metal, so it. It, it, it's, it's impossible that that rock came from it because there are like two kinds of different um, of, co of coffee grinders you have the the steel burr and the ceramic burr if it was ceramic then it would make much more sense to have that more like rock consistency you get what I mean but it, no it was a steel burr so it definitely did not come from the grinder nothing chipped off and the uh, where I was um, pouring the beans from was a simple plastic cup which was empty to begin with and I used it just this morning so it couldn't have come from there oh, that's a very nice van classic van so the only thing where it could have come from 
is probably in the package itself where the beans are. And so, and if so, that means the, my supplier, where I get my beans from, they, they mail it to me like every, every two weeks or so. They must have had that rock in there, hopefully by accident. But it, I don't know, there is no other place I could have seen it coming from. Hope you didn't drink eat the stuff. Yeah, I mean the grinding didn't finish at all, so I had to throw the 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 coffee. So I started composing a mail, taking some shots and uh, writing to the guys. Like I I think uh, there is a rock. My package, my beans came with the rock, and now my grinder, my two month old electric grinder, is out of commission. I haven't heard a reply yet. They kind of reply slow nowadays. Probably too busy. But let's see. But yeah, in the meantime, I, I was able to take the rock out. So after I rested for a bit, I got my energy back. I started just flicking through it at different angles. And uh, yeah, somehow I saw the rock budge just a very tiny smidge. And from there, I knew that I had a chance. So from there, I. I was able to pry it off. After that, I just cleaned it and everything and it's still working. Whew. But goodness, I'm really hoping that the company does something. At the very least, I don't know, give me some beans, give me a new grinder or something. Otherwise, I will look for a different one. Because it's like, customer service is very important. Stone clumsy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think I think so. No wonder they were a bit on the salty side. Salty coffee for the win. Comes with uh, nutrients and minerals. <laughs> it works. But yeah, customer service is really very important aspect. So this is like a test for their company. Uh, so far though, they've done a pretty good job. Like I've had some very urgent requests from them like my grinder, my old grinder suddenly broke and I was buying a new one from them or I suddenly ran out of beans and I wanted to order one immediately and they were really doing their best to uh, or I was running out of coffee filters so they were really doing their best to reply and uh, uh, be reasonable and uh, putting customers first basically so I really got that feeling so I'm hoping it's the same with it in this case we'll see I'll keep you guys posted about the rock saga actually I kept the rock it's still there on the table I'm hoping I didn't drink any of it but um, I'm still okay now so uh, I guess it's okay if I did, it was super ground to bits, so maybe I won't notice anyway. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll keep you posted there as well. Never hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe it will work like vitamins, you know? I don't know. What are rocks composed of anyway? Do they have minerals? I guess they have a lot of minerals, right? <laughs> Goodness. But maybe the different kind. Maybe the not the type you ingest. <clears throat> Customer service. That's something that I've learned to... Uh, I think I've learned to be a more demanding customer through the years. Like demanding in a still reasonable manner, in a, personally, if I evaluate myself, I'm not like a spoiled brat yet who just like demands uh, unreasonable stuff because I know how it's like to be on the receiving end of that. But yeah, I, I make sure that I also don't be a, I'm not a, what do we call it, a pushover, is that the term? But I just let the companies handle me however they wish so I've learned to make demands uh, when needed
And nowadays, it's becoming very popular here in Singapore for food delivery. And it's quite interesting because there is no traffic in Singapore, right? Minimal traffic. Uh, Singaporeans would disagree that there is no traffic. So, But comparing with other countries, there is no traffic here. Yeah, let's put it that way. But still, food delivery is very, very famous. Like, I, I, I can imagine <coughs> it being very popular in the Philippines because uh, you wouldn't have to contend with traffic. So food delivery is a an absolute lifesaver. But in Singapore, like it's a it, it's a very small country. You can get anywhere very quickly. There's public transport any, everywhere. There is uh, no uh, traffic. So if you think about it, you, it, food is easily accessible. But still, food delivery is very famous here. And uh, I have been... We, we, we order a lot. Like we, we order a lot versus like eating out. We order more from there. It's quite interesting now that I think about it. Maybe it's just a, like a, I don't know, first world problem or something. <laughs> more convenient for sure. But it's quite interesting now that I'm thinking. But anyway, yeah, so uh, in the beginning of those, uh, the food delivery saga, we had a few companies here. And uh, that first company was not very good initially when it comes to consistency like delivery times are out of whack um, the delivery guys would suddenly just disappear or you wouldn't know where your order was or it would be like one or two hours late and stuff like that so it really start to complain about things but the good thing is they, they like compensated for it I, I think they lost a lot of money for it there is a certain company which whenever they're late, like, I don't know, 10 minutes late or something, 15 minutes late, they give you a $10 voucher. It's like, ooh, $10. Okay, <laughs> like, that's one person's meal already. So there was a time when we were having food delivered. We, we got that $10 discount every, almost every order, or every other order. Well, like, let's, let's continue ordering here. Let's make sure he's late or something. <laughs> Super convenient. Now, nowadays though, they're more refined. I think they're they have uh, matured their systems, so they, they don't get late anymore. So we don't get any vouchers anymore. Gone were the days. <clears throat> yeah, still very useful. Like when was it? Yesterday, I think it was, or no, the other day, I had to have food delivered. Like normally, I would prepare my own lunch, and I, recently I've been very much into salad, salads like lettuce, uh, tomatoes, and just prepare some kind of protein, some kind of meat or fish, and just put everything in the salad with a nice uh, balsamic vinaigrette uh, dressing, and voila, very nice very keto friendly as well minimal carbs and lots of veggies so very simple to do and very easy to clean up it takes like i don't know 20 30 minutes including the washing but yeah the other day it was so busy at work absolutely no time for preparing maybe i only had time for like a bio break or something Really scrambling left and right. So the food delivery really helps. <clears throat> A few taps on the phone. Wait like 30 minutes and we're good. <clears throat> and I need water. Let's wait for this guy while this guy is checking us. Whoa! Thank you. Sorry. To turn off track IR.
I wonder if the the barrier closes after some time if you stop um, if you don't move <clears throat> I'm always paranoid with that in real life I keep I keep thinking it will close on me those uh, barriers like this This side, we are now entering Russia. Zone of the border control. Had one close on our truck. Ugh, painful. Did the who paid for it then? How does that work? Would insurance cover it? Papers, please. Very nice game. It was an old truck and it didn't really do any damage. Ah, I see. That's good. Lucky. I think we've had instances like that as well in the Philippines some uh, malfunctioning barriers I'm not sure if it's ever settled though I think it's up to the the, the owner of the car to do his own repairs or something bad luck basically <laughs> thought it was funny good thing she has a good sense of humor then So what other news have you guys heard? Any new stuff from the trucking world or other games? How about that castle flipper you guys were waiting for? I keep thinking that there's something that I have yet to try that I can't remember. For the life of me I can't remember. Like, you know that that feeling when you're like you're you know you're forgetting something but you can't quite pinpoint it that's the feeling i'm getting oh ses utah yes uh, how was it were you able to join i saw the blog post <clears throat> the welcome signs looked very detailed very customized Nice uh, attention to detail there. This one, let's take a photo. Looks really good. From the articles I've seen that they posted, uh, Utah seems to be a very... Uh, how do you say? Seems to have a lot of different rock formations, huh? can't say that me and Rox are pretty close at the moment. I kind of have a grudge against them. They almost made me lose my coffee supply. <laughs> but maybe I'll get uh, I'll get over it eventually. The format plan release within a week of Utah DLC. Awesome. Will they be impacted by the Utah DLC? I don't think so, right? Because they will be... What are what areas are they touching? California? Mostly? I missed this truck. It's been a while. Yeah, the only thing I'm not such a fan of is that sighing sound. Everything else is absolute classic. California in a large part of Nevada. Ah, but not sectors connected to it. I see, I see. They're, they're probably just playing it safe. 
because there might be some sneaky updates again. So they'll probably want to have Ryuta released, do some tests on their own, make sure everything's stable and nothing has been sneakily modified, and uh, then release it. Will it be free? Yeah. I'm guessing they have that donation thing going again. If it's like Mexico Extreme. Will be free, nice. People will absolutely love it. There may be no beta. Did SCS give a hint on when Utah will be released? They say it's November, but anything closer? Like, next week? <laughs> well, they do often uh, line up their DLC releases with major updates, right? So 1.36 would be it. So maybe when 1.36 releases, Utah will be released as well. Somewhere very close pro in pro close proximity of each other. Turning into, I think I'm. I think my my uh, calculations are a bit off because of that steerable axle. It's, it's a bit too uh, shaky. Yeah, same with me. I think that's a safe estimate. Even within a week of 1.86 going live. Now, when that's going live, who knows? Maybe give it. I don't know. Two or three weeks. Yeah, I think so. Oh, here we go again. Dang it! Too close to this side. Okay, let's let's correct this. Let's make this proper. That's it. The space here, yes. That's yeah, more like it. There we go. But we're still turning a bit too sharply here. Okay, there we go. I'm happy with that. Belko Grod, I think this is. Late again. Not very timely, huh? 30 minutes. Okay, fine. Fine. Don't take it. Ooh, now where do we go? Yikes. We can go back to Kiev. So that's the shortest one they have. Oh wow, okay. Oh yeah. They're releasing it now? Nice. That's going to be free as well, right? That can work. Kropi Nikovski. Hmm. Don't think that's the new one though. Let's see if we find something else. It's kind of hard to find jobs going there. We can take this Kiev one, but we'll take a different road. Yeah, we'll take the north road here. Yeah, that can work. Let's take that for a difference. Yeah, what I've seen from their shots, it looked very promising. From the sh things they've been sharing, definitely looks much better than the than the one we tried, right? 
and with EVR sounds built in, goodness. I wonder what kind of arrangement they made there. If EVR gave his permission or... I mean, he probably did, but how, if, he, if they like aligned on a set cost or if EVR like donated or something. Like donated the sound files to them. But that's nice. Nice to see that that's... Uh, let's take that. Nice to see that they have that built in. By first of next month, cool. Uh, remind me, Grand Utopia. We got an update there, but it was only for donators, right? Oh, we have that uh, race trailer again. I wonder what SE has changed. It should drop when we're closer. If previous trailers are any indication. There we go. Ah, something is wrong with this chassis. Include more new cities, nice. Ah, yes, I think I've seen that. That looked very promising. There we go. Actually fits very well. Yeah, as usual. My god, this is uh, mapping skills is absolutely next level. Still my favorite uh, one is the one map. It's not something you, it's not somewhere you drive if you want long hauls, but if you're okay into like making regional jobs or whatnot, that's perfect. Did I stop at bus sim 18? Um, what was the latest update in bus sim 18? Uh, the map extension, the PS4 and the console release. Heavy 3D. <laughs> it's still there somewhere. Uh, stuck in a ditch or something. <laughs> now we're just going a bit uh, more off roady Day, so I thought I would take a more uh, classic looking truck not sure how we call it a uh, bit more rugged truck yeah that's the one it's the English word in Tagalog we'd call it pangharabas something more uh, rugged ah yes with the missions and such I'm not sure actually Hmm. Maybe there was not much activity in the in the mods in the mod space and in the update side. So it was getting a bit repetitive. I think I was waiting on something, but it didn't come for some reason. It's a shame though, huh? like in the modding sense. I think there's, until now, there's only still only one bus mod. I'm not sure why the modders or the... Yeah, they didn't get into modding for bus sim 18. Is it too casual for modding, maybe? So usually modders like their... Uh, like to mod for super hardcore simulators and... Uh, games like that.
three map mods, yeah, but uh, from what I've seen, it's not as. Uh, what do you say? It's not the level I would like, I think. <clears throat> they featured a. Uh, a new map made by a community member, isn't it? I think I saw that trailer. It looked nice, but it seemed very... Um, what do you say? I think the original map looks a lot more sophisticated. It's not easy with an Unreal Engine. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the pickle right there. Hey, hey, this. Thanks for joining. How are you? We're going to make a bus mod for BS18, but it looks super complicated. Ah, I see. And you thought OMSI was hard. Goodness. That's a real showstopper then. Yeah, because a game is kept alive in a huge part by the mods that come in. And if there's not much activity, then it can get quite limiting sometimes. It's an amazing game though, but yeah. At this moment, I am waiting for something more like a big update, which adds a lot of content or stuff like that. It's still one of the most polished bus sims out there. I think it's the most polished bus sim out there at the moment. Not the most detailed because it's aimed more for a casual audience, but it's uh, for the driving experience. It's th it's the best you can have right now. I'm kind of missing the ibis though. I kind of missed the uh, fiddling around with the ibis and uh, studying manuals just to drive a bus. Like just driving a bus is not just. There is no just in it. It's driving a bus. It's like driving a train, flying a plane. Yeah, all the complexity with the buttons and the, the different machineries. Uh, it's it's, it's the part I really like. Along with the driving, on top of the driving. <clears throat> Main thing with bus sim is the missions and such, not really the mods. I don't know, I, I, uh, I like the missions, I guess. But it wasn't very, like, I wasn't really hooked in it. You know, I, I could let it go. I, I'm not a completionist by default, so I'm, I don't have a problem with stopping in the middle. So, like, uh, it's, not, it's, it's not an issue for me. Like, I'm more on the open-ended side of things now. <clears throat> Struggling to find... You're the guy from YouTube that accepted the 6,000 km. Ah, hey, this, yes. I remember now. How, how's it going? Struggling to find OR. Come out with a good outro for the... Uh, what do you mean? Get that. Yep. Buses are slowly making it into Lotus Sim, so something to look forward to. What is Lotus Sim? Not sure I've heard of that. Sorry for blocking you. My bad. Sorry for blocking you as well. But you stopped. It's your fault. And you guys told me I should stay in the outer lane. Inside the roundabouts. Ooh, our first experience with a detour. And that's very fortunate because I forgot that we are actually supposed to go the other way. Dang it. Let's go this way instead. Might be a blessing in disguise that we got that detour. So let's go straight and see where that detour is going to take us. Actually, the, the sad thing is we might have to, we might not be able to finish this journey. I see we only have 30 minutes left. We'll see. Lotus is the new OMSI. Oh, that one I really like. I like the sound of that. What is the current status of Lotus? 
is there something like a beta release or a, a playable version already? Struggling to find or come out with a good outro for your videos. Ah, I see. Okay. Ah. Hmm. I wouldn't worry about it so much. I mean, I don't have a decent outro. <laughs> it's not matching with my end cards and everything. Because I'm lazy. But I would say that would be like a, a nice to have and not an essential thing. I would say go start your videos already. You don't even e need an intro and outro. People are more interested in the content itself. And you can just add that later as you see something you like. Lotus has trams in multiplayer. Most are waiting for buses to get into early access. So it's released already? There is ambient occlusion and better lighting. Hmm, I, how come I haven't heard of this Lotus before? Must be really out of the news. Being a multimedia designer, ah, so that's why you're very uh, picky when it comes to that. Makes sense. So this is the detour spot. That's the spot they blocked. So we can, I guess, just go around. Yes, I live in Singapore. But yeah, I would say the, the intro and outro are nice to haves. People uh, care more about the content. Sometimes even the outro is detrimental. I have a feeling. I haven't looked at the analytics yet. So, so I'm really lazy. But I have a feeling that people just fast forward my intros anyway. Or skip it altogether. Or tune out of the videos when they see the intro. So intros are not a very... Intros can be a hindrance, I would say, like that. They have to be used very sparingly nowadays, especially with people having very low, uh, what do you say, attention span. Yeah, people like instant gratification. So if they click on a video and you get, you have a very long intro, they would like just either skip or uh, get turned off and turn off the, choose a different video entirely. That's at least my point of view. So I'm thinking of shortening the intro or even getting rid of it at some points but I would want to get a look at the data first because at this point I'm just assuming hey Kingslayer welcome back been a while how have you been Lotus is quite expensive ah. also easier for German modders to get into it as German game I see I see Very simple intro, nice. This is a very nice map, very nice addition to the map combos you guys are planning to have. I would highly recommend it. It's been super optimized so far, even in Kiev. Uh, we hardly had any frame drops. Most of the frame drops are probably because of my CPU. But yeah, the, the views are very nice, the cities are very well made, custom textures and whatnot, custom assets. And yeah, very stable so far. And this works immediately in 1.36 beta and Arias has been... Well, I think Arias is one of the most uh, knowledgeable people we have in the community. Like he knows his stuff really. If you read his posts from the forums. They make a lot of sense and he's very helpful as well. Look at that. People on the crossing. Overpass there. It's a pity that he is in conflict with uh, some of the folks. But yeah, I mean, if you're passionate about something, you tend to make enemies. It's a normal thing. They say people without enemies don't stand for anything. 
that might have some truth in it. Pro extended, yes. Pro extended 2.3. Rust map. What version is Rust map in now? I think 1.9.0. And I think there are like two different versions. Of it one from. Of course, I forgot who it's from. But it's not from Ultimator anymore. I think right. He stopped. So someone took the mantle, at least unofficially. Oh crap. This is going to be pretty dangerous. Um, uh, yeah, let's try to save some fuel here. Hide having to donate for buses that have taken many months to make. Yeah. Can, I can understand that. Although... On the other end, if it's a donation basis, you can't really force anyone, right? Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Good thing this is downhill. If it was uphill, we would have run out of fuel for sure. This might be the thumbnail right here. You really like that. Sergey and GMT Avares. There you go. Thanks a lot, Alex. Enjoy Hades. There is. Oh, we just passed a few. <laughs> That notification came just a few meters too late. So we'll see if we can hang on till then. Oh, this is a lovely drive. Very gentle uh, bends. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Glad to have you here. You can use Blender too. Blender is free. I remember we used Blender once back in college. In the university, we had a course speeding offense. I don't care. I'm saving some speed, so I'm saving some money. We had a course where we were working with Blender. And I made like a Triple H. Uh, do you guys know Triple H, the wrestler? I made like Triple H but park, um, South Park form, you know, like big head, small body, like a, a caricature kind of thing. So very simple model but uh, he, I'm not even sure if I still have the video, it, it would have been nice to share what I did back in my college days. So I made like a Triple H and then the, his intro, you know his intro for not sure if you guys were wrestling fans. I, I was a wrestling fan before when I was a kid. So I, uh, his intro was he would step out the, the stage and then he would be doing his fierce pose and then he would be like blowing, he would be drinking from a bottled water and then he would be spraying it up, like blowing it up, like what is the term? Like in the mist form and then he would walk towards the ring. That's his entrance, and then you would hear his uh, music, intro music as well, of course. So I, I made that, and he, he would blow the, 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 the water up, and they, I had to like put in some particles. I, I forgot even how I managed it. And then he would walk to the ring, so I had to work with some like different camera angles for dramatic uh, pur purposes, like, like from behind, chase camera and stuff like that. And then he would enter the ring and uh, walk around and look fierce. 
I can't remember actually what it looks like anymore. I can just vaguely remember that I did it. But it would be nice if I ever manage to find it, I'll share it with you guys. <laughs> oh my goodness, that doesn't look good. I think we'll have to use emergency services here. Might take a while here in this isolated place. We'll see. Must be much younger than you. When you were a kid, Triple H was not a wrestler. What was he? He he was before uh, uh, Hunter H. Helmsley. I think he was. He had that like refined look. He was a wrestler already, but I think he was like more the. He had an image where he was one of those like British uh, folks that were like super formal. Like he had that look. Maybe not British, but uh, you get what I mean. The the kind of. Like Alfred, the butler kind of thing. Very formal and stuff. Very refined tastes. And then after a while, he changed his image into something like a real, uh, a real uh, tough guy. Like someone you would not think of crossing. And he uh, grew his uh, muscles and everything to look the part. And then he became Triple H. Yeah, there you go. Hunter Hearst Tempsley. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I was also in there. Yeah. I was watching already by that time. He was in Triple H yet. <clears throat> but I can't remember anymore what his entrance was. Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior. Oh, yes, yes. I think I uh, came into wrestling around that part. Yeah, the, the time of Hulk Hogan Ultimate Warrior, that's the that's my entrance. That's the time I entered. But I think the peak of my uh, wrestling exposure was with The Rock. The Rock was just phenomenal. Absolutely loved that guy. Amazing face, amazing uh, emotions and just uh, added the story to everything. Super entertaining guy. With The Rock, Brock Lesnar, and uh, who else was there? Randy Orton. Uh, those were like the. Before I left the wrestling scene, I think that was the. Uh, look at that. Only 426 liters. Very small fuel tank. Oh, yeah, figures. <laughs> that small of fuel tank. Can you smell? <laughs> but The Rock is cooking. Absolutely amazing guy. I think he's still the best, but I'm, I'm biased because that was my time but Yeah, next level entertainment Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> Rock absolutely decimated everyone on the mic. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely agree there I don't think anyone could have matched him on a trash talking battle Bobo Brazil he stacks cut. <laughs> I don't know who that is I <laughs> Are those wrestlers? Yeah, early 90s, that was my era. Don't feel so old anymore. <laughs> Wrestling hype. It used to be WWF, right? And then it became WWE. I'm not sure why. Is it conflict with trademark with uh, WWF? The... The... Charity Foundation with the Panda? That's the only similar name I could think of. You like 80s wrestlers, prehistoric wrestlers. That was way before my time. The, the names don't even sound familiar. <laughs> Goodness. That is when you watched. Uh, yeah, 80s I was still too small, I think. So I only. Uh, was able to watch the, the latter part of uh, that era. Go take a $100 shirt, walk the people's ramp, get in the people's ring. See to check your. <laughs> yeah, only the rock can say it with such uh, amazing fashion. And, and you know the most amazing move, right? The people's elbow. 
Like, there is no explanation how that thing can even decimate anyone, but it does. Like, the people's elbow was like a special move, a, sp a finisher. And it was nothing but a simple elbow drop with a lot of fancy fanfare in between. <laughs> Unbelievable. But yeah, it was super entertaining. And that's what it was all about. You were born in 86. Hey, same with me. Yeah. 86 for me too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think we are in the same era, Hades. That was our time. Passing by Sumi now. Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan. Oh yeah, I uh, I reached the the end of that. Yes. So many uh, memorable uh, stuff there. Those were good times. Very entertaining stuff. I remember me and my brother even watched it because they they went one time live to Manila. It was a very amazing experience, first time watching. First and only time, I think. I can't remember if it was SmackDown or Raw, but they, they went there. And I think Undertaker was there. Uh, I can't remember who else. But yeah, those were very cool times. And I think... Might be somewhere that is Uncharted. But yeah, the, the only weird thing watching live is um, you don't actually hear the announcers, right? There is no commentary. So you can just see a couple of guys um, wrestling each other. But then again, oh crap, yeah, this is what I was afraid of. Dead end. So they're wrestling each other, but there is no commentary. So, and, and it, kind of, it kind of feels like something's missing. So I. I liked it because it was live, but it didn't feel the same. Is that true in any game? I think it is, right? Even in sports, uh, any sports matches will have that. Because the, the, the commentators really add something, really add a lot of flavor to the picture. And without the commentary, it's a bit uh, different. Something's missing, in my opinion. Maybe that is why I do commentary videos. <laughs> Maybe th those are the roots. I don't know. Did watch some of that era. WrestleMania 23. Oh my goodness, WrestleMania. And the, the Royal Rumble? Did you, do you guys remember Royal Rumble? That, is, that I think is my favorite uh, event, the Royal Rumble. You have so many guys inside the ring and just like trying to... Uh, uh, carry other people out, throw peop other people out of the ring and be the sole survivor kind of thing. That was a very interesting concept and of course you would be cheering for your uh, for the, the fan favorites, for your uh, favorite wrestler. I'm not seeing WWE anymore either. I think it's past my time. I did I did transition to UFC though. I really liked UFC for a time. I really liked the, the technical aspect in it. I didn't uh, like the, the violence or the hurting each other. But it was very technical. It was like an art, right? They call it mar martial arts for a reason. And it was very amazing how uh, how people can find like the best angle, how to um, ev evade something or how to the best the, how, how people just find the best ways to either hurt someone or uh, avoid getting hurt and all the the details that entails is just like, very engaging so for a couple of years i was very much into ufc it's very up to date with the with the fighters and uh, that one it's entertaining but it's uh, doesn't have a story it's real uh, it's real fighting real uh, arts martial arts So a match could end like in five seconds or in five, uh, not five hours, but 
5 minutes or 25 minutes. But yeah, some matches lasted only like 5 or 10 seconds. Because the moment the fight started, someone got a lucky punch in or uh, like someone was very aggressive or someone was very uh, uh, arrogant and yeah, they, they didn't focus enough or yeah, just lucky or unlucky depending on where you're standing. Of all WrestleManias are watchable anywhere. WWE has a network? Wow. Nice. What is AEW? I'm not familiar with that. WWE loses its glory once you realize it's fake. The winner is picked before the match. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, the the I'm sure the the people are getting hurt still in the, the it it doesn't it doesn't hurt any less if you get thrown around. But yeah, there is a there is a storyline and it's uh, entertainment. It's not a, a a real battle so to speak. So when you start growing up it starts losing its appeal. Shawn Michaels, oh yeah. The Heartbreak Kid, right? Do you remember it right? Yeah. Oh yeah, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Owen Hart. Uh, there's like the sharpshooter, the... Uh, yeah, I love those special moves. And uh, we used to play those on, uh, what was it? Sega Genesis or, uh, yeah, back on the consoles. We used to play all those wrestling games in the... It would be so amazing if you, when you manage to pull off the, the finishing moves because you know that you, you won most of the time at least. It's so cool. Very real concern about concussions, yeah. Well, the, the chairs they use are not, I guess, the, like the hardcore real chairs. They're the softer kind. But still, it would hurt, and still, it can create concussions, and still, it would be painful. So it's it's not like as violent, but it still is. But yeah, there is a story, so it's not like a real sporting match. It's uh, entertainment. It's uh, like watching a movie. Chris Benoit. He was my favorite for quite some time. Uh, what was his uh, finishing move? The, the, the thing in the face? Uh, what do you call it? I remember it was on the face. Like he would like be on your back. He would be stretching your face or something like that. Crippler's cross face. Exactly. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Submission. Goldfish memory. Apparently when it comes to wrestling, maybe all the memory is the... <laughs> <laughs> stored on wrestling goodness but yeah it's only coming back now I, it's been a while since I thought of it I'm actually surprised that I remember all these things yeah but it uh, seems like I really enjoyed it that's why I I don't know it just stuck stuck maybe when I was a kid I didn't have goldfish memory so the long term memory is not that affected I don't know no explanation what I know is that this road has been very entertaining so far. I like this little like aisle in the middle. It stays uh, untouched because all the wheels are uh, only flattening the sides of the road. So opera for men, exactly. That's the one. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it still hurts. It's not as uh, it's not as how do you say? It's not the same. Like if you body slam someone on the ground here versus you body slam someone on that mat, it's not the same level of pain. But I'm sure it still hurts. You know, but uh, yeah, it's it's not that uh, it's not soup. It's not hundred percent authentic. Because they need to survive somehow and uh, wrestle for another day. <laughs> so it has to be sustainable. It is still painful, but it is sustainable. Let's put it that way. And this is a view I am really liking. That can work. 
I, I like also like that Vince McMahon saga. Like he's like the what the CEO, and then he, he got into the ring and he was forced to wrestle and stuff like that. And at some point he he uh, grew his body as well. <laughs> that storyline was amazing. Brock Lesnar. Hey Rohan, how are you, man? Just in time for some clumsy trucking, I think. Hopefully not. Been busy at school. Yeah, injuries are still real. They can still happen. But it's not as authentic as you would have thought it was when you were a kid. <laughs> Brock Lesnar got into UFC and fought for real. Became a champion and stuff like that. Amazing guy. I think he had to go through some illnesses. Yeah, it's been a very hard road for him. I'm not sure how he is now. Wow, trees are real. Are you in a different time zone now? Rock Lesnar. So yeah, he, he fought for real. No more choreography or uh, or uh, set decisions. Really fighting for real in a sporting match. You hate WWE so much. How come? Mother Frostberry. I've never been in New Zealand. Probably not. What is it? It sounds quite interesting. Is that some kind of dessert? And we are getting laggy, I know. I'm tight. Something is uh, eating at my GPU. Something here somewhere. It's an energy drink. Ah, I haven't tried it yet. I don't think we have that here. Wow, 97% on the GPU. The tracker, yeah. Upgrading soon? Ah, good question. I wish. Probably not. Maybe Ryzen. If ever I upgrade, I'll probably upgrade my CPU. In GPU, I will wait for AMD to up their game on the encoding, and then I'll get that. That's my current plan. Do I have a tracker? Um, what do you mean tracker? Intel for the win. <laughs> Alex would agree with you there. Oh, yes, yes, track IR, yes. I do. That's why the head movement is uh, very natural. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, Alex. Man, look at this view, huh? Take one more photo. We'll have to leave soon. I don't think we'll, have, we'll be able to finish. But we can stop over in Konotop. And at the very least, we discover one more city. So we were actually able to circle around this area. The other areas are here and here. So I think we've covered quite a good ground here. How's my day been? It's uh, still in the morning. But yeah, I've uh, had to do a lot of stuff already. 
I was mentioning to the guys that we were, that I was, uh, yeah, work has been pretty hectic recently. And yeah, I was working before the stream when I woke up. And I think I will work right after. So there's a lot of ground to cover. Oh my goodness, now that is a view. Rohan, this is for you. Rohan shot 101. Yes, this is natural looks. Look at that. When I look here, I get some kind of GPU overload. Oh, maybe with the particles. That might be with the particles there. What is a distro plate? Graphic memory. I think there are certain options you can set. Because I remember Scotsman had not a more, not a very powerful GPU, but he was able to do it. He was able to use Natural Lux. I think he just tweaked some of the launch parameters or something. This drop plate is a plate for water distribution, for water cooling. Ah, I see. Yeah, I, I don't have a clue about water cooling <laughs> yes exclamation point discord feel free to join there see you there Hades thanks Jay that's a great sunset to end the stream closing time and this looks like a lovely little town corner top Are you planning to uh, water cool your entire rig, uh, Alex? So the CPU, including the GPU, and uh, I don't know what else that entails. Maybe I should get back into PC building sim, huh? So that I can get into the water cooling aspect of it. Might be something good to explore for knowledge. CPU and GPU water cooling, man, hardcore. And you're in. See you there, Hades. Nice. Compensate for the short stream last time. If only I could. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, reality is knocking on the door. We'll catch up next time, guys. Sorry about that. I'll uh, take a look, Alex. Thanks, man. The parts are not available. So is there no, um, like, how do you say, off-the-shelf uh, GPU-cooled, uh, uh, water-cooled GPU? Shoo. That's what, that was a nice trip. Ah, oh, no, I see. Yeah. I'm, I'm still very ignorant about water cooling. I'm paranoid that it, the, the water will dry up. And I will left with no cooling whatsoever. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I'll need to educate myself on that. <laughs> Your brother has it. Nice. Alright guys, I'm off. Catch you guys on Discord, alright? And uh, see you next week for some Halloween uh, action. I'll try my best. I'll keep you posted on Discord. It's not technically water. So it's liquid cooling is the more proper term, not water cooling. I see. Thanks, Alex J. Rohan, blah. 80s, KM, and whoever else is on the stream. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate the company. It was a very nice, uh, what is that word? Respite? Respite from the, the grind that I'm going through right now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Catch you next week. The ionized water with some treatment. Sounds fancy. Thanks, I'll, I'll uh, look at the pics. Come see tracking guys and bye-bye.